Welcome back, everybody. Amagansett Press is a failed motel manager, and today I will prove it to you. But first, we will watch a clip of Amagansett Press when he was getting arrested for trying to record kids. In that clip, he was saying how he was a great assistant for a fantastic photographer, and he went to school for photography and all this BS, when in fact, he was actually helping a slumlord have tenants live in horrible conditions. But before we get into that, make sure to check out my brand new channel, Josh Prime Unfiltered. It's a commentary channel that has nothing to do with frauditors. I talk about random stuff I see online, random controversies. You might like it. And if you're interested, the link is in the description. With that out of the way, enjoy the video. All I'm trying to do is pay my bills, man, and right. put food on the table and an honest, I'm a hard working guy. Been working hard for 35 years. I've been with that young lady for 37 years. I started dating her when I was 14 in high school. You've been in media most of your life? I went to the School of Visual Arts in Manhattan from 1989 until 1992, majoring in photography. And then I was a staff photographer for the New York Times for years. Okay. And then after that, I was a personal photo assistant to Patrick de Marchelier, one of the most famous fashion photographers that ever lived. I'm not the guy that's out here breaking the law, man. I didn't do anything wrong, I can promise you. And I'm not gonna hang out with my 17-year-old son across from my high school with some nefarious intent against the school. I don't even care the school's there. I have no interest in the school. All right, so you guys heard it. He was the personal assistant to Patrick de Marchelier, one of the greatest photographers in the fashion industry. But now, why don't we talk about the truth instead? And talking about the truth, I just want to make one thing clear because I know that Amagansett Press will try to take down this video with a false privacy complaint just like he did with the last one. YouTube, if you get this footage and you have to review it for a privacy complaint, all the information that is being read is on a public website called EastHamptonStar.com. It's a legit news organization. And yes, the name of the person is cited, but it is public knowledge, public domain, since he is a public figure. So none of this information is doxing. It's all information available online. All right, so now that we have hopefully prevented one of the malicious attempts that Amagansett Press will do to take down this video, let's read the truth. The article is called Fire Marshal Finds 61 Fire Code Violations at East Hampton Motel. An East Hampton Town Fire Marshal's office investigation into a complaint last summer of overcrowding at the inn at East Hampton uncovered 61 violations related to New York State Fire Prevention and Building Code, but concluded that the original complaint of overcrowding at the 20-unit motel was unfounded, according to a release sent out by the office Friday afternoon. A representative from East Hampton Town Ordinance Enforcement Department said earlier this spring that it had received a call last July about overcrowding, while that was not an issue, the 61 violations include missing or inoperable smoke detectors, missing carbon monoxide detectors, electrical junction boxes with exposed wires, extension cords in lieu of permanent wiring, combustible debris such as old mattresses and cardboard boxes in the basement, and exterior lights suspended by live electrical wires, in all second-story units. Such violations created serious life safety hazards and fire hazards, all in violation of the code, according to Fire Marshal's office. Our first and foremost priority is the safety of the tenants and ensuring the swift remediation of these hazardous conditions, David Brown, the Chief Marshal, said in the release. I welcomed the fire marshal with open arms and voluntarily gave access to all of our rooms as well as the entire property, Jason Gutterman, who took over as the manager of the inn last fall, said in an email Saturday. It is my goal to correct every violation on the report as quickly as possible and bring the entire property into compliance. 
The two-story yellow and white building on Montauk Highway was formerly the 27 Inn and prior to that the Dutch Motel. Its rooms are now rented on a long-term basis to local workers, several with young children who attend East Hampton schools. When Ordinance Enforcement received the complaint last July, the motel was housing a group of Jamaican students working summer jobs. But late last year, following serious damage to many of the motel rooms, the inn at East Hampton changed its business model and began renting to year-round residents. Its manager, Mr. Gutterman, told the Star in an interview earlier this year. The previous managers were aware of the existing violations, however, they failed to notify the owners of the property, and for that reason, no action was taken at that time, Mr. Gutterman wrote. We have made great efforts to bring the property up to code in recent months and have already fixed many of the violations we received. The recent inspection by Fire Marshal was the first of the inn since he took over as manager, he said. The unfurnished rooms rent for between $1,300 and $1,500 a month. Now, of course, Mr. Gutter Trash is full of excuses, as usual, and I know some of his lens liquor will say, well, fraud or troll, he's just a manager. He doesn't have the power to change things there. Then why work there? Why encourage such living conditions by volunteering to work for a company that treats their tenants like trash. And even himself, without any funding from the owner, would be able to fix some of these issues. I mean, look at this. Old mattresses and cardboard boxes in the basement. You can easily throw that at the trash or bring it to the dump. Exterior lights suspended by live electrical wires. He could be able to fix that if he's a hotel manager. Shouldn't he have some type of skills to be able to manage the hotel? This doesn't make any sense that this thing happened. I mean, these people were living in horrible conditions. And Amagansa Press was more than happy to work for this company, to work for this man, and profiting off people's misery and people's lack of options. But let's keep reading the article. According to the town of East Hampton's tax assessor, Alex Demetriads purchased the property in February of 2004. He signed two deeds on the same day, one for $2 million and the other for $300,000, Purchase under Hamptons Land Corporation CEO, World Properties, Mr. Demetrias, the corporation's CEO, received his tax bills in Floral Park, New York. Hamptons Land Corporation is due in East Hampton Justice Court on July 11th to respond to the violations. In the meantime, the on-site manager of the property has been notified and is expected to begin repairs immediately, the fire marshal's office said. It is our goal to complete the remaining work as quickly as possible in order to continue to provide a safe and wholesome environment for the families that live with us, Mr. Gutterman wrote on Saturday. Now, clearly here he's lying because he cannot continue to provide a safe environment if he has never done so in the first place. But let's keep reading. It is the owner's intention to comply and they have agreed to work with me to that end. And this is the end of the article. Now, I know, like I said, a lot of the lens lickers will say, well, he's just a manager. He didn't have any power to hire an electrician because the owner has to pay for it. But why would you work for such a company that is clearly treating their tenants like trash? Why would you be complicit in that? And there are several things that he could have done that wouldn't have cost a dime, but he decided to just be complacent and let the people live in miserable conditions. So that should give you guys a little bit of insight on who Amagansa Press is as a person. Now, before we wrap up the video, I just want to showcase a little bit of his begging for mercy as he was getting arrested, because that also showcases what he truly is like when he thinks the cameras aren't rolling. Thanks so much for watching and enjoy this clip. We're not criminals. They're going to make me sleep in jail. Why? Sir, please. Please, dude, please. Oh my God, don't do that to him. You guys don't know what you're doing to me, man. 
Why? Where are you taking me? Right oh, man. Ma'am, ma'am, ma'am. You, ma no, you, you, go you guys really don't know what you're doing in my life with this, man. Seriously, please. Sir, there's nothing we can do. Sir, there's nothing we can do to discuss this, sir. Please. 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 They're taking pictures on the sidewalk, baby. Sir, please, is there anything I can do, sir? Please. Don't do this to my wife, man. You don't know what you're doing to my family, man. Please. I'm begging. I'm literally begging. Where am I going to put my feet? Sir, I'm begging. Please. 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 Yeah, this is a little stiff. Now I live here!